finally my genius is recognized. The Pharaoh, God King of the Delta, has chosen me, G Light's the Golden Hand, to construct his own private temple. He has provided some very curious specifications, however. First, the temple must be sturdier than the very mountains. Secondly, to store all he intends to bring there, he expects no less than 30 large chests worth of storage. A whole army's armory and provisions he could store in there, yet he wants it all for himself. Likewise, the design is to be sleek and robust, made to easily stand the test of time. And today, the living god decreed the work must be complete by Thursday, a mere four nights from now, and we have not yet begun. May Ptah, the god of craftsmen, smile upon us. Four marble triangles are to form a foundation, walled and doored like so. The sepulchre must be placed as close as possible to the right wall. Seedings are to be meticulously aligned according to ancient tradition, with the lines aligned towards the center. Surely to do otherwise would incur the wrath of the gods. A window frame will go here, and two shelves in front of it, where I shall keep my tools. As the work continues, I shall sleep on the floor, as befits my station. Next, the marble hexagon is completed, leaving this last triangle open as a chute, with a shelf upon which to climb up. To finalize this stage, the chute will be erected like so, adding a triangle shelf inside and another door. Walls will then enclose the second floor almost completely, with the doorway placed here. Again, the ceilings must be aligned according to custom, lest evil befall. This is how it is to be at first, but this is how I dream it to be. All doors shall be metal curtains embossed with the image of the goddess Sekhmet. Many more shall be added inside. On the second floor, all ceilings and floors are armored, except for the one right at the door, which is to be upgraded to sheet metal. The shoot down is to be armored, with all other walls paneled with sheet metal. Down in the inner sanctum, all walls bar for one, by the shoot, shall be armored. The one shelf tile closest to the sepulchre upgraded to metal. All foundations upgraded to sheet metal, except for two, which are armored. Here, and one under the main sepulchre, which can be upgraded from outside. The work is progressing rapidly, the skies are clear, the nights a gleam with beautiful stars over the desert. The workers sing hymns to the gods as they work. The god king will be most pleased, and my name shall be famous in the kingdom. Always before building a third level, the sacred rites of honeycombing must be observed. These are to be wrought in precious bronze and copper. Since, like our ancestors, they will later be entombed, they must be upgraded before then. The star shape is to invoke Sach, father of all gods. Then comes the third floor. The opening on the second floor is to be closed in, and leading to the shoot up, two shelf pieces will be placed one metal, one stone. The shoot up is then to be completed in metal and closed with another sanctified curtain. To the left of the shoot, another wall and curtain are to be added. Then a marble wall, a single door and two more walls. Ceilings of appropriate make will cover the floor, but with a triangle frame behind the exit. A ladder hatch will be set to block the door when opened, and the door will be installed opening outwards. A compartment on the right will serve as an armory. 
A blessed dart trap of ancient design is to be placed here, completely undetectable to any invader coming through the door. And under the burning desert sun, the tower is to be built. The shoot up will comprise two stone window frames and a single doorway, with a windowed door. Then, alternating roof pieces and window frames, covered with embrasures, will complete the day's work. We did make good progress, but a few of the workers went missing today. We found their clothes, no signs of violence, it's as though they took them off, put down their tools and vanished. But in a dream I saw them. They were carrying large stones and running, as if rushing to build something. They seemed wretched somehow, not altogether human. A search party was sent out, of course. That said, the desert night is still as beautiful as ever, though a few clouds gather in the distance. Surely the days of rain are some months away? Looking towards the door, a foundation goes here, at the right edge of the honeycomb. But not here, here a gap remains. Then two foundations with no gap between them. And again a foundation to the right, but not to the left. Then two foundations. And a third time, by the rule of threes. These gaps are to house three separate hidden chambers where items of great value may be stored. Where there are two foundations, a separating layer of stone will go between, followed by two metal walls. Where the gaps are, a metal wall will go to the right, followed by a marble shelf and a burnished bronze frame. The frames must be rotated to invoke the blessing of the conditional side. But nothing is to be placed in these compartments yet, as they are still unfinished. This process is to be repeated on all three sides of the temple. With this done, ceilings will cover all gaps. Once more I remind that they must be oriented correctly, attached to the outside walls and not to any other ceiling piece. To have correctly oriented triangle tiles above the secret chambers, temporary twig walls must be placed, to which these metal triangles can be attached. Finally, golden triangle roofs will decorate the second floor, like this. These can be placed by walking back along the edge, or placed easily from above using temporary twig platforms. A storm is brewing in the distance. It reaches us soon. The search party has not returned, and a dozen more of the men have vanished. All speak openly of the visions now, visions of feral-looking men and women, swarming in the hundreds, holding large stones. A word from ancient legend is being whispered around the camp. The name of the Limbo World between life and death, where only the most wretched of sinners are sent to wither in oblivion. The limbo plane of Q. Is that to be our fate? If we have angered the gods, maybe this temple will be our salvation. We must work faster. From each of the three gaps in the honeycomb, where the secret chambers will go, a temporary twig triangle is to be built, followed by a line of nine square foundations. 
All foundations except for the ninth are to be destroyed. Then, from that ninth square, triangle foundations are to be built towards the temple until it is possible to set a square foundation right against the gap. This foundation will be set in metal and the secret chamber sealed. To open it, a temporary twig roof can be placed like this. However, it is not yet finished. First, a triangle foundation is to be attached pointing to the right and a metal frame between the foundations. Then, the chamber must be opened and the triangle frame must be attached like this. Not to the external socket, but rather the inner socket. Without this triangle frame, a gap remains through which the chamber can be defiled. while the foundation and arch will provide stability. More expensive but foolproof is this. Or this. This secret chamber seal will decay in time, however, so it must be consecrated and given the blessing of the gods by attaching it to an altar, where offerings of protection could be made. Build out four marble squares from the chamber foundation, followed by two triangles. The second triangle will serve as a metal compartment for the altar piece. And the first one will be stone, serving as honeycomb. These are to be closed with windows. And at last, the temple is to be walled. Two triangle foundations will be established here, then two window frames and a single door looking outwards, with a stone frame behind. Behind the left window, a triangle compartment will be established. Here, a sentry turret will sit, protected by a stone shelf and low wall. Then, this foundation, second from the door, will be fortified, and bronze arches will run from the altar to the gatehouse. To finally seal the temple, high walls will be placed. I suggested a larger compound to make room for refining furnaces, or better a furnace base outside, but the pharaoh struck down all suggestions that might delay the temple's completion, and with the storm fast approaching, the altars were dedicated to Shai, the personification of inevitable fate, Amut, the devourer of souls, and Wepwawet, the opener of ways. And now it is finished. It is done. Will the gods be appeased? The kingdom is cursed, dying. Most of our people have vanished overnight. Men and women, workers, servants, farmers, priests, wiped out of existence. Those who remain are haunted by phantoms of the men and women they knew, but stripped of any semblance of humanity. The God King has betrayed us. This temple is cursed. It must be destroyed. I have stolen a key. Tonight I will enter the Sanctum and destroy the main altar. I will end this nightmare tonight, before it is too late. I will arrange for a distraction and evade the guards. With the stolen key I will enter quickly, hoping the traps will not stop the one who built them. And then... But why so many chests? What does he even keep in them? What devilry is this? What sort of 